Okay, so today we're going to talk about corporate social responsibility or so called CSR. Have you ever heard of this before? Yes. What does it mean? Company shareable value to society. Company shares value with society. So, what does social responsibility mean? If you take something, you have to give back. Yeah. What does social mean? Are you a social person? <laughs> hmm? Are you outgoing? Do you like meeting people? Yeah. We can use social that has that meaning. But in this case, social, we're more talking about society. Society. Social has the meaning of society. So, responsibility for society. Who has responsibility for education? Who is responsible for educating children? Teachers. Parents, teachers. Who pays the teachers for educating children? Government. Government. Who has responsibility for making sure there is no crime? Who pays the police? Government. Who has the responsibility for making the roads? Government. Who has the responsibility for looking after the health of people, old people or other people? Mm -hmm. These are all society problems, right? Usually the government is looking after those kind of problems. Do you think that companies get any advantage because the government does those things? What about if the government didn't pay the police? Would that affect companies? If there was no police, no difference to companies or difference to companies? Difference? Then maybe the company have to hire more security, they have to hire their own security force. What about if the government didn't pay for school and a lot of people didn't go to school? Would that make a difference to companies? Or no difference? The government decides to go back to 100 years ago where the government doesn't pay for school, a lot of people just leave school at 12 years old. Does that matter to companies or not? What do you think? Yes or no? Yes, why? No proper They don't they can't get an educated workforce, right? What if their workers get sick, or their parents get sick, or their parents have to look after the workers? What about if there's no roads? Could the companies exist if there was no road? No, right? So the company is part of society, and the company also gets some benefit from society. Is it clear that the company gets a benefit from the society? There couldn't be a company if it wasn't for society. So like you said, the company takes from society, so the company also has to give back to society, right? So normally they pay taxes. The taxes that the company pays have to pay for education, have to pay for the police, have to pay for the roads, okay? But we're talking about corporate social responsibility more than the taxes, right? Doing the taxes is just the basics, basic thing, but other responsibility that we have. Uh, for the communities and so on. So we are going to look at just one part here, which is uh, the environment. So it's we can split up. We we'll uh, see yes. Also, sustainability. We'll talk about it later. It's a little bit similar. The environment, social and governance is also called ESG. So 
company has a responsibility about the environment. These days it's getting more problematic, right? They also have a social responsibility, like making sure that there is gender equality in the workplace or investing money in the local community. And they also have the governance. Governance is uh, also, they should make sure their company is being run properly. We talked about already corporate governance. It's mainly dealt with here. So we're not going to talk about this part as much. We talked about corporate governance already. So in this case, let's talk about the environment. So we'll look at introduction, the financial benefits of being green. Do you understand being green? Yes. What does that mean? Another word is environmentally friendly. Which is easier to say or write? Environmentally friendly or green? Green. So people use green a lot these days, right? If you're green, you're environmentally friendly. Are you green? Am I green? <laughs> I'm green today. Korean people are quite green. They do recycling. In Ireland, they only have... They don't do much recycling. Just to, People, if they want to, voluntarily, they recycle glass and cardboard. A lot of people just throw away their rubbish in the normal bin. But I was surprised in Korea, I have to do the recycling, right? Police ago. Is that correct? Police ago? Do you do the police ago? Or does your par do your parents do? Do you help your parents? I have to do everything. My wife doesn't have to do it. So I have to do it. Take action. So it's a lot of work, right? Are you green in any other way apart from recycling? When you buy something, do you care about green things or not? Not really. Are you a green consumer? Yes. You are? Yes. How? Uh, I, uh, I check the information to make the CO2 block logo. Mm -hmm. This means CO2 logo means this product make uh, use the CO2 level. So I check the level. Okay, check the level. If you're buying electric equipment like refrigerators or TVs or so on, even cars, you can see the energy code they have between 1 and 5, right? Yes. So some companies have this kind of label. You care about that? Do you guys care about that or not? Hmm? Not really? Okay, so uh, we can see that we have some voluntary standards for the companies. And we look at a case study, Industrial Commercial Bank of China and Australian New Zealand Bank. We'll compare them to two companies who have different ways of uh, being green. Do you know Industrial and Commercial Bank of China? You're from China? Are you a customer? Bank of China? Which bank do you use in China? China, which bank do you use? What do you use? Yeah. 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 About the environment, we have international treaties and agreements and national laws. Can you tell me one international agreement about the environment? Famous one about CO2? Named after a city in Japan? Kyoto Protocol, right? Okay. So, some countries didn't sign that, right? The US or China didn't sign it. Kyoto Protocol. Most of the other countries did. Okay. Uh, international treaties. Uh, generally, we're going to see that there's not international law is more general. It's not that specific, right? 
If we want countries to agree, it makes sense. If we want countries to all to agree on some law, it's not going to be very strict, right? Because if we want to make a very strict law, can we force the countries to follow the law? Can I say to Korea, follow this environmental law or else I'm going to invade you with my army? <laughs> I kind of find from the US, but maybe that's the only country that could do that, right? But they don't do that, okay? So we can't force countries. Do you want to have a national army, international army, world yeah. army, yeah. to force countries to do things? Do you think the UN should have an army? Do you want to have a world government? <laughs> hmm? no. Then everybody has to follow. No? So Europe is trying to make a European army now these days, in the future. So just countries can decide if they want to keep the agreement or not. So it's not going to be so strict. If we make it too strict, too heavy, then countries might say, no, I'm not going to join. So the international law may not be too strict. And then in different countries, we have different national laws. Okay? But what we're talking about is companies should do some, their own voluntary uh, standards right, for their company, for their investments and their lending. It's just like you. You can. You are not forced to buy. You are by law. You have to do the recycling, right? That's a basic thing. But on top of that, you're doing something extra. You're not forced by law to buy the CO2 product, or high CO2 or low CO2 product. You do that extra. That's voluntary, right? So companies also can do voluntary action. So we're going to look at this and also the difference between. Some banks in developed and emerging markets. So first of all, let's talk about the financial benefits for companies. So if we talk about CSR or ESG or that kind of thing, sustainability, we're not. It's not just a charity from the company, right? It's not just that the company is very nice and they do those things. Then they're losing money, but anyway, they're in, that they should do that, right? They can also get some benefit benefits from doing those things. The first one is improving reputation. Can you think of any green company? Tesla. Hmm? Tesla. Electric. Yes. They're making new electric cars, right? They're trying to use more solar energy, renewable energy, right? So if a company can get some sign, like you said, like this low CO2 or some environmental badge, standards badge, they can improve their reputation. The next one is risk management. Uh, they can have less risk, we'll talk about it more later. If we have these kind of things, our company can have a lower risk. And then attracting private investment. People might prefer to invest in our company because we're a nice company than another company. Okay? So the first one is improving reputation. So of course, people did some financial study about this. Do you want to do a PhD degree? Baksa? Baksa Hago Shupayo? Do you want to do a PhD? If you do a PhD, you could do this kind of research, right? So does improving your reputation mean more financial performance and attracting more better workers? Yes. Okay. These guys did this study in 2003, McKinsey Consultancy Company in 2009, right? They studied a lot of companies all around the world. Your reputation is better, you make more profit, and you attract better workers, okay? And especially in emerging markets, they find it's more beneficial, okay, uh, for them. So if you are a recognized leader, for example, in Brazil, they have one bank, which is, is a kind of leader, in their market, then this bank can make more uh, profit, can get more foreign investment and so on. Another good thing about this is it can cause countries to avoid scandals. So if you have an environmental scandal, you your stock price goes down, 
we talked about BP. Do you remember the scandal of BP? Yes. Their stock price went down by 50%, right? So if BP was doing this proper way, they wouldn't have had that kind of scandal. Okay? So they would have avoided the scandal. So we can uh, get an improved reputation and better performance. Uh, we here, what about workers? Do you prefer to work for a company which makes guns or a company, an NGO, which is helping orphans? Do you understand orphans? What are orphans? How do you say orphan in Korean? Hmm? So which company do you prefer to work for? It's the same salary, same condition. Are you going to work for a company making guns or helping orphans? Hmm? You're going to make guns? Why? It's more fun? You're going to help orphans? Right, so it depends on the people, but generally, workers prefer to work for a company with good reputation. Right? A company is doing nice things and has good reputation. Is that important? Yes, we want to have the best workers. If we can get the best staff in our company, then we're going to do a better job than the other company. Staff is important. Okay? Also for keeping our staff. Staff, a lot of staff these days, they change their job after two or three years, right? If our company is not a very nice company, the staff might get uh, demotivated. They might decide, if they're working in Enron or BP, they might decide, oh, I don't like Enron anymore, I'm changing to another company, right? I don't like BP anymore, I'm going to change to Shell or another company. So we can keep our staff too. And if we keep our staff, we get some advantage because the staff already has the experience and the know-how. The new staff we need to train. So risk management. So these days we have new laws and regulations about the environment all the time. Government is making new laws. For example, increasing the price of water. If the company is using water, the price of water goes up. It's a new law. So, if the price of water goes up suddenly, and we're using a lot of water, our company will get damaged. But if we already have a good system in place for the environment, that we don't use a lot of water, we use something else, then our company does not get as much damage. So we're more prepared for the future, future risk. So, yeah. International Financial Corporation, they did a study in the emerging market and they found out that for the uh, emerging markets, this is the most important benefit, financial benefit for companies, managing risk. So if I want to invest in an emerging market like Brazil or India, one of my worries is that Brazil or India is quite risky, they have quite high country risk. So if the company in Brazil or India has this kind of thing, right? That means to reduce their risk, then it gets an advantage even more in the, in the emerging markets. Because in the emerging market, people are more worried about risk. So <clears throat> then the next point is attracting investment. We have uh, so-called green securities. <clears throat> I actually I invest wanted to find some I wanted to do this kind of investing because this kind of company is less risk in over the long term. But actually Korea doesn't have that much developed market yet in this area compared to the UK or Ireland. So I try to find a fund which only invests in the nice companies. Right? But glo I want to find a global fund, not just Korea. In Korea they have maybe four or five ETF funds for Korea. If we go to down... Some student made a trap for the teacher. <laughs> who, who did that? <laughs> Got a bad score in their midterm. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> I escaped. <laughs> So actually, in Korea, I am down. If I want to find some fund in Korea, it's not worth changing my money to uh, 
uh, another to Ireland. So I have to find down Gungyeong. Gungyeong. Where is the Gungyeong? Jinkon, Jinkon. You see up there. Jungwon, right? So here in Jungwon, they have some list of uh, ETF. So you can see all of the ETFs in Korea here, and they have some green, green uh, ETF. It's not very big. You can see at the end maybe not many people have invested. Do you understand the ETF? What does ETF mean? Exchange traded fund. So exchange traded fund means that they make a list of stocks and they don't change them. They, you just keep the same stocks. So it's cheaper than the other fund. That's why I like ETFs. The other funds, they're always buying and selling the stock. But there's some cost for always buying and selling stocks. So here we can see one, Tiger Green. Right, can you see this fund? Yes. So this is an example of a, of a fund in Korea. So uh, the green fund invests in just uh, green companies. Okay. So uh, just it tells us the price. Just tell us the Kyuk Jambu. So what kind of companies are involved in this ETF? So we can see they have Yosang, LG, Hyundai, Samsung, Jonga. So they just decide. Is this company a green company? Yes, then we can buy stock there. If they're not a green company, then no, we're not going to buy stock there. Okay? So LG is a green company. They decided. Most of these funds have their own way of deciding whether it's a green company or not. Okay? They buy the stock in LG and so on. Okay? So if your company is green, you can attract more investment because people want to buy the green fund. They buy this fund, your stock price goes up. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. If you're not included on the green fund, people don't buy your your stock is not going to be included here. Is this big in Korea? We can see that the, the biggest funds are at the top, so this is on page four. Here we have uh, some numbers about the fund. It's not that big yet. Okay, they have a three or four other ones, mm. but they're not that big. Okay. They, in, in Korea, I can only find one fund, not even an ETF, a fund. It means I need to pay 3% fee. With these ETFs, you pay just 0.5% fee, right? Uh, some global water fund by Samsung on Hanna Bank. So, uh, we can see that Korea is not as developed as the US or the UK for these kind of funds. But if I check in the UK or the US, I can find a lot of global funds, green or SRI, SRI fund. Socially responsible, so corporate social responsibility, social responsible investing. So I want to find some SRI fund. So here we can also just put in SRI in the search, right? And see what we find. Here we can find an SRI fund and an SRI fund, right? So they're quite small. What kind of companies do they have in their SRI fund? Uh, SK, Samsung, Hyundai, Neighbor, so on. Okay. So we have these kind of financial products. Do you understand these kind of financial products? So these are green funds or green index products. I showed you in Korea, but they're quite a small number and not that popular in Korea. So I guess in the future, if 
you work for a funds company, you could start a global fund, right? Or you could do that now. Go home, start a global fund, drop out of the university. <laughs> right? Do you understand what I mean? Starting a fund, then I'll invest in your fund. Right? Or ETF, global ETF. Because I want to invest in SRI or green ETF for the world, but it doesn't exist in Korea, only for Korean companies. Okay, so in the UK they have for all over the world. So you can buy the nice companies in the world. They are on this index, FTSE for good. We have in China, we also have this index. We have in the U US, most famous one, Dow Jones Sustainability Indexes. And uh, <coughs> green funds. We also have bonds. Companies can sell bonds that are so-called green bonds. And green private equity. Just investors, like someone who has a lot of money, like Bill Gates. They give all the money to, and want to invest in a company. They might want to know that the company is green before they invest there. So let's just check the Dow Jones. Some Korean companies are actually, some Korean companies are leaders in the field of uh, sustainability. Uh, if we check, you can see Dow Jones, the second hit, Dow Jones Sustainability Index. So, uh, leaders, 2014. <coughs> so, we can check here on the annual review. And this tells us the leading companies in the world for social responsibility. They make an uh, investment product, so people will know uh, if they can invest in the, uh, here we can see industry group leaders on the world. So, do you know this company, BMW? Yes. They are the leader in the automobile industry. Okay. Uh, here we can find Republic of Korea, LG Electronics. So we saw LG Electronics was on the large amount of stock in the Korean fund. But LG Electronics is the world leader for consumer durables and apparel. Are you proud? Yeah. <laughs> Korea is actually doing okay, because look at this list. How many sectors are there? Just 20, and Korea has two, which is 10%. Oh. It's not bad, right? Lotte Shopping in retailing is a world leader in social responsibility. Okay? So we can, you can see the other companies here. We have to have different sectors, because Thai oil, in energy, right? In energy is very different environmental and social factors than in banking, for example. Okay? So, this is, uh, they go and they, they assess the companies. Why right? do they assess the company? Is your company sustainable or not? Do you do these things or not? The company has to answer a questionnaire. They look at the newspaper articles. They go and they interview people in the company, they check the company, go to the company sometimes, right? So the company makes a report, global reporting initiative. They give them some score. If they're the top company, they go here. Dow Jones also has a, a list for Korea and other things. Then the funds, you can make a new fund. Okay, when you go home, you can make this fund. Choose these 20 companies, okay? And you're going to invest your money in these 20 companies in the fund. 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%. Okay? Because these are the leading companies in the social responsibility in the world. Okay? Put your fund on down finance or make a deal with uh, SK Bank to sell your fund. Right? Then take your fee of half a percent. Make a lot of money. Do you understand? Are you going to do that? Go home? complicated to set up a fund and buy the stock in all the different countries, it takes a lot of work, right? You need some money to invest, but if you join a company, you could give them that suggestion, right? You could join the company and suggest they start this kind of fund, but it depends on demand. In the UK and in Ireland, people are worried about these kind of things, so there's high demand for this kind of fund, right? Maybe in Korea, there's not a high enough demand yet. People are not thinking about this as much when they do investments, right? Might be a little bit different uh, culture. So, 
we can see the report, they have some document which is uh, here. So they make some report on the company. So they give the score, right? Here they have economic. We said environmental, we could put in here economic, which is like governance, is included in this part, right? So total score, they have split up into economic score, environmental score, social score. So uh, economic score, 70. This is LG, is the yellow. The average is the blue. And they are the best company, so they're the same as the black. Each company, they can have this rating, right? So they're well above the average here, the average here, and above the average here for each of these things. So where did I get that score from, right? Uh, they, these kind of things, they look at their stakeholder engagement. We talked about stakeholder engagement earlier in the course. Are they doing stakeholder engagement? What about their labor practice and human rights? Okay, products, supply chain management, innovation, brand management. <clears throat> so they give scores on these different areas and also on the environment and the social. So this is like a score sheet. So as I said before, this is a growing area that these days companies want to make that kind of report. If I make that kind of report, and they can ask, ask the Dow Jones to come to my company and give me a score, right? Like a credit rating agency does for debt. Then I can get some advantage. I can be included on these indexes. I can sell my more stock. So I can attract more investment. So this is growing all the time. Maybe not as quickly in Korea as other countries, but uh, we can see that uh, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but companies which signed up to the UN Principles of Responsible Investment, it went to 15 trillion to 60 trillion in assets, okay? Companies who own, who signed these documents. Uh, in emerging markets, the assets under management, 6.5 trillion, this is from a couple of years ago. It's a lot of sustainable people who want to invest into sustainable assets, okay? 75% of investors think about climate change information before they make their investment decision. So as I said, I wanted to invest in uh, that kind of fund, but I can't because the fee is too high, so I just invest a small amount of money. Right? So I thought about this before I made my investment decision. So it depends on people. Some people just think about profit. They don't care about any of this. They just think, where can I make the biggest profit? In gold, in housing, in whatever when I invest my money, okay? But nowadays, three out of four people are thinking about these kind of things before they invest their money. Or at least thinking about climate change, like you, right? Before, even before you buy something. But this is investing, investing in a company. Okay, if you invest in a company, are you going to think about those kind of things or not? Or just profit? Hands up, let's see in the class, is it 75%? Hands up. Who's going to think about just which can make me the best profit in the short term? Profit in the short term. Or investing, I'm going to think about climate change, environment. Is the company bad for the environment or doing a good job for the environment? Okay, so hands up, only profit. Hands up, the environment. Is the company doing something for the environment? We had three people who didn't vote. Environment or profit? It's easy to put up your hand anyway, right? Some people uh, might just do for profit. So if our company can do these things better, then we can get more investments too. So we have these kind of voluntary standards for companies. The first basic one is the ISO standard. We talked about ISO standards before. We get a, we get a stamp. You can see these guys celebrating. They're certified ISO 140. We have an environmental management system. What is that started in 1996? What that means is you have a system to manage the environmental things in your company. You have somebody who's in charge. You have a process. Somebody who's checking up. You have employees. Okay. You have a system to make sure that you're not damaging the environment. Then, if you do that, you get the staff. 
Next one, 